Now I'd like to talk about how the monomers of sugar can polymerize to make polymers of sugar. Here's a linear form of glucose, and the important part is glucose is an aldose. It has an aldehyde at the end. All the linear forms of sugar have a, a carbonyl or double bonded oxygen to a carbon, and that allows for ring structures to form because this is very reactive. The oxygen pulls electrons towards it, leaving uh, sort of a positively charged carbon at the bottom. Now what can happen is we can rearrange uh, these, ad uh, these atoms in the molecule around their bonds, and it turns out that this penultimate, or, or next to the last uh, carbon, has a uh, hydroxyl on it, and that hydroxyl can react with this carbon in the carbonyl. And it can do it in two ways. One way is that it can react with it kind of like this, with the carbonyl sticking up, or if it flips around, we can see it'll react with it this way. That makes two different forms. Turns out that the electrons, and I'll just use the electrons in the bond here, can form what's called an alpha bond if it breaks it apart, kind of like so. Now what'll happen is the alpha configuration of this has the hydroxyl facing down when all of the other hydroxyls face kind of flat. That means that if this wants to react with another uh, molecule, it has to react kind of from underneath, and that causes sort of a spiral shape to form, and I'll get into that in a minute. Now, the other way that it can work is that if we rearrange this so that the hydroxyl attacks from the opposite side, it turns out that we're going to put the hydroxyl on the axial situation. Now what that means is it kind of sticks out. Can you see that all of the hydroxyls are facing outwards? I know this is kind of long, but you can see this is straight. So when this reacts with that other molecule, it'll do it in such a way that it's flat. To show you how that looks, using a simpler model, these, these Duplo blocks, um, it turns out that you can see here we've got the oxygen as one of the ring members, and we've got a, a carbon sticking up in the corner, and that when we polymerize these, they do so in such a way that they'll form this big gentle spiral. And that gentle spiral uh, allows water to move in and enzymes to come and cleave one off. In the alpha form of the glucose polymer, water can get in and bring enzymes to cleave these off. Alpha glucose polymers are things like starch and glycogen, which allow monosaccharides to come off for energy. If we do the beta form, where they form that flat line, it turns out that when they stack up, they tend to stack up in alternating ways. So that the oxygen will stick up in one, and then down in the next, and uh, up in the next, and down in the next, and that forms a flat, straight structure. And it turns out other structures can come in, and they can hydrogen bond between each other, excluding water and that means they don't break down as easily. Cellulose is a beta form of polymer of glucose, and even though it's an isomer of the alpha form, it's hard to break it down. That's why houses made of wood don't dissolve. That's why a cotton shirt, which is almost 100% cellulose, can go into the washing machine and come out and you can wear it. Something that's all starchy, if you put that in the washing machine, it'll dissociate and make a big mess. So even though they're all the same atoms, they're put together slightly different as an isomer and has immensely different chemical properties.